Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here. So listen to the ugly old guy again. <laughs> I don't see any uh, ugly guy. Any, any uh, updates or changes on our, on our prayer list? Is everybody doing reasonably well, doing better, not as good as what? Well, Angie went through her surgery and she was doing good Monday after the surgery. So Who's Angie, that? Angie Stanley, she was scheduled for surgery Monday. Okay. And uh, she takes care of it. I think we went around the room, everybody could have at least one thing that they're thankful for. Mm. And most of us have everything to be thankful for. Yes, I did. Any other updates on that? Any other updates? Yeah. I'd say Virgil is doing so better. He's able to start eating again. That's, that's, that's good news. That's good. <coughs> Catherine got home safely. She had a really good visit. Um, enjoyed catching up with a lot of people here and um, and got home safely. So yeah, that was great catching up with her. Yes, I think so. Very nice. I was so busy I didn't even get to see her. Oh, I got my hug in. Well, that's okay. I've been praying hard for her. Appreciate it. We don't, uh, I guess sometimes we can fall into the trap of, of taking even God for granted and taking prayer for granted. Mm -hmm. But don't fail to pray. If you tell somebody you're going to pray for them, do it. If you yeah. have to do it at that very moment, don't just do it. Yeah. Don't say, okay, you're sick. I'm going to pray for you when I go to bed. <coughs> no. When I remember it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, we, even the youngest among us have a tendency to forget. And, and sometimes, you know, our attentions are good, but somebody said one time, the road to hell was paid good attentions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, don't fall into that, that trap. Any, any, any others? No? Well, let's pray. Oh, sorry. I Wait. thought you were just going over the updates. Yeah, I do have a few. Um, Marty, I uh, would like to pray, uh, just keep her in your prayers. Uh, she took another small fall, um, so it could, just some bruising and stuff like that. And uh, But just please keep her in your prayers. Is she and, still at home? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's at home. You know, Jamie goes over there quite a bit, things like that. Uh, and then uh, Maria. She had called me yesterday and we talked for a while. Just, I really, really want to, and I did the call them all, but just keep her in your prayers. That uh, when, people, when, when, when people are going against you, it's, I believe in this case, I truly believe it's the, it's the devil, the principalities. Yeah. I truly, truly believe that. And I don't say that with a lot of people. Is there anything we can do for her? They, they are so shh, all about helping everybody yeah, else. Yeah. Is there anything we can do for her? I had asked that same thing. Uh, I just... Dusty and I uh, pray quite a bit, things like that, but um, no, I just think that she just definitely wants the prayer, and I told her tonight we're going to, uh, you know, maybe we'll just, we'll each pray for them, and you know, things like that, and it's just, you know, it's it's real, and of course, uh, you know, just the stuff going on in Israel is, it's, mm. it's heartbreaking, killing babies, stuff like that, oh, so yeah. oh. i tell you what, yeah. I, I have a friend who is in Tel Aviv right now, her son and his wife and daughter are there. She works for the embassy. Mm. His wife does. And my friend Libby and her husband Mac went a week and a half ago to Israel for two weeks to visit with their family. And they've been close to all of this mess. And so a, a lot of our people that know her have been praying for her. So I just, and I know everybody's praying, but. That just brought a little bit closer home to me that you know she's gone to visit her family and and they're at risk and they can't get a flight out 
uh, not from not from anything in the United States. So they've got to, if they can get a flight, they have to fly to another country and then try to get a flight back home again. Yeah. So what turned out to be a fun trip with her grandbaby and her and her mm. children has turned into a terror. Yeah. And um, so, but her name is Libby, and I just ask your prayers for her and her family. Any more? There's one more that I uh, just as I was leaving, um, I heard them say that they were going to have a vote on the speaker of the house. Yeah, today. Everything's blocked. Nothing can move until they get a speaker in. Mm. And I would think this might be the very most important time for the right speaker. And I had no idea who would be the right speaker. But it is going to be a lot of stuff that will happen in the next two or three years is going to rely on who we get to be speaker. So pray that we'll have the knowledge to get the right one. Okay. <clears throat> I think America will eventually be get through all of this. Oh yeah, no doubt. There's just so many, there's so many that has come in. But God's still on the throne. You got that. Amen. Right. I love it. Hey, you know what? And I, I got to say Amen this. on that. I'm sorry, Ron. I know you're getting ready to get started. But, but that is, you're just exactly right. It's just a refreshing, no matter what's going on, I know who was on the throne, period. Absolutely. And I got to stand bold. I got to be bold and stand firm in the I just know. So I can flip to whatever station. I can get all nervous. And, and believe me, I, I, I can do it too. When I hear that babies are being killed, I'm sorry. That makes me, that angers me. That put that kindles anger in me. But I go into prayer and say, Lord, I'm not, I can't do better than you. I can do what you've called me to do. So just guide me to just like you said, keep praying. Call people. Just pray. Say, hey, man. And that's what that plug-in prayer is all about. Yeah. Just people have gotten, I love the people that have gotten in a comfort zone of just saying, hey, man, let's, someone just call and say, hey, let's pray. They'll, they'll pray and we barely say hello. And they hung up. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> if it's for his glory, that's all it needs to be anyway. Yes, yes. I can't imagine that much hatred <clears throat> that you yeah. would kill a young child because he's of a, a different uh, nationality or a different faith or or whatever. I met a pastor from California to National. I caught him on Facebook back a couple months before and I happened to run into him. Uh, the name of the church is the Way Fellowship. Uh, they are Free Will Baptists. He's been broken into four times in, since Friday, and uh, it's just a real mess. Uh, they haven't really messed anything up, but they've taken, you know, cameras and equipment and stuff like that. So I think we just need to pray. And of course, some of his messages, he puts on video like Scott, that, you know, anger, those type things. And uh, I mean, they're real to everybody, you know, nobody's exempt. So we just need to pray for the church. and. That they will be able to catch these guys. Yeah. And it seems to be the I mean, they got them on film, so it's the same guys doing it. Uh, just in California? In California. Where? You got a town, city? I don't know. That's all right. Yeah. I don't know. It's crazy. Jeez. Okay. <clears throat> Carter, I have a question, if you don't mind. Sure. I want to. In Genesis 12, 3. The question, if you can who it be, it said, I will make of uh, make of the three great nations and will bless thee and make their name great and that there be a blessing. Now my question is, when they speak of three here, I will bless them that blesses thee. Thee I will curse them that curses thee, and in thee shall I the family of the earth be blessed. Enters on V. My question is enters on V. Who is it speaking of? I wasn't looking at it. I was trying to listen to you. Brother George, brother, the answer is on V. Who is it speaking of? I, I feel because he's talking about Israel. Israel. Yeah. And anybody yeah. that goes yeah. against yeah. Israel so that's my, that's my question. will be cursed. Yeah. 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 And those that support and, and, uh -huh. and help Israel. And, and 
service or going to be blessed. Right. Right. Because I have this in my service in the first in the thing Bible study we've been going through this week due to the incident that's going on in Israel today. So we still have a responsibility. We know yes. we know who the Lord is. We know yeah. what he's a capable of and this and that. But this Bible is being fulfilled, you know that. So we're asking I'm asking questions because I was taught to ask questions. Yeah, I, I wasn't right. taught to give answers. My grandfather taught me that. So you want to keep the faith and ask questions, and you stay on top. So I, ask, I have to ask people. I call y'all Bible scholars. I'm, not, I'm just a whole country boy. Mm -hmm. Y'all Bible scholar, you and the preacher and the brother Carter. So I'm a country boy too. Huh? I'm a country boy too. Yeah, but you you're a northern country boy. I'm a southern country boy. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible says uh, the Lord says. My people, no, my my people were the Israelis or the Jewish people, the Hebrews. Right, but he put emphasis on the in the, in this in this verse. Well, the. that's yeah, that's exactly it's the guy, and I've been reading a lot of that into, uh, of course, Jacob and the seed of Jacob and things like uh -huh. that. But it's God's promises to Abraham, and, yeah. and I love when He repeats it too. Uh, there's a commentary that I love that says God repeated the promise now that his father was dead and Abraham was compelled for more complete obedience. That's right. That's yeah. right. I'm sorry, Brother Joe, Brother Carl. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm, I'm finished. Hey, we got food in there. We'll just keep going. <laughs> well, let's pray now. God, we love you and we thank you for loving us. We thank you for bringing us together. You brought us here. You greeted us when we got here. You're always with us, God. We can't do anything without you. We are nothing without you. And when we get that through our thick, hard heads, we do so much better. When we go off on our own and try to do things without including you, it's then that we fall into <coughs> some of the ugly circumstances. Help us, God, to always lean on you, to trust you, to love you more. We pray for these, God, who have been mentioned that have one problem or another in their lives. We pray for this church that George mentioned that has been the victim of break-ins in recent times. And we just ask that you be with them <clears throat> help them keep the faith and be strong in, in spreading the good news of Jesus in, in their area. And, you know, we want the person or persons who are responsible to be brought to justice, but then justice is yours, we remember. Thank, thank you and pray for Marty. We ask that you would be with her and bless her and mm -hmm. Scott and Jamie in the days ahead as they face the stress and the difficulties of dealing with a situation over which they have no control. We pray for the Gillilands, God. They, they're experiencing some, some problems. We just lift them up to you and ask you to touch them and hold them in the hollow of your hand. And then, God, we can't forget the, the folks in Israel, the country and the people. They're your people, and by extension, they're our people, too, because we're all children of you, yours. We just ask you to wrap your arms around them, protect them, Give them peace, peace in the real way and peace in their heart. And then there's that other war going on in Ukraine. That's a, that's a big mess and we just pray for the people there that somehow, we just, in our lifetime, God, it would be nice to see peace for our, for our time in the world. But then we know that <coughs> peace will come when, when, we, when we see you, when you call us home. So if that's how long we have to wait, then wait we will. We've gathered God to, to bless you, to honor you, to ask you to be in our midst, and we want to glorify you. So in that end, God, we give ourselves to you now. Use us according to your perfect will. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, Brother Ron, I, I, we were listening to a song on the radio coming over this morning uh -huh. on an enlightened to listen to enlighten it um, was how beautiful heaven can be oh yeah how beautiful heaven can be uh, so yeah. i'm having a lot of time for that yeah i like that how beautiful my brother and i used to sing that that's a beautiful song we've uh, we've already touched on a, a bunch of what's going on in the world today the excuse me the situation in in israel and that part of the world and the things here at home and the things are just troublesome. Is that song troublesome times are here? Mm -hmm. Filling men's hearts with fear? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sing, I promise. <laughs> oh, thank you. You can sing it. And you can sing it. 
<laughs> yeah. But but you know we we can't we can't let ourselves be be forever looking on on the dark side of things. In Romans, <coughs> excuse me, chapter eight, Paul writes about a, a conflict, if you will, between living in the flesh as opposed to living in the spirit. And he begins by saying, "There's now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus." Who, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. He points out in the next several verses what living a fleshly or worldly life looks like and the consequences for that kind of lifestyle. He also shows that following Jesus is to live, to live, and as such, receive the spirit of adoption and become children of God, then heirs, even joint heirs with Christ. He goes on to say that when we can't find the words to pray or even know what to pray for, the spirit makes intercession for us in ways we can't communicate and probably can't comprehend. Um, if you want to follow, I'm going to read Romans 8, 31 through 39. You probably all can recite it by heart. <clears throat> what shall we say then to these things? Mm -hmm. If God be for us, who can be against us? That's right. That's my favorite one. He that spread, that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us, for us all, how shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Mm -hmm. Is God? It is God that justifies. Who is it that condemns? It is Christ that died, gave rather, he is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the sloth. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. That's, some, that's some powerful reading. I mean, that's that's some powerful scripture. Mm. <clears throat> oh, that's powerful, but that's just one of those things to be. So that's, that's one of those scriptures that a lot of us just hang on to, a little tighter maybe than others. Yeah. The verses we just read um, and others that will follow offer encouragement and hope to Christians living in today's age. It used to be said that bad news travels fast, uh, yet now. People see events of the day in real time. You turn the TV on and you're watching something that's just going down. Good, bad, or ugly. You see it right then. It's like you're an eyewitness. You're present as events unfold. These, this, can, this can lead to anxiety, fear, confusion, intimidation, even depression. In spite of the negative things we have thrust on us, and sometimes we bring things on ourselves, these things, <clears throat> these things that we must process we must remind ourselves, and often, that everybody and everything is not bad and we're not alone. Respite and promise are found uh, where David wrote so well in Psalm 27, 1, The Lord is my light and mm -hmm. my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Mm -hmm. we, got, we got everything to hold on to. Mm -hmm. You have every reason to be strong. Mm -hmm. During or at the end of many newscasts, the commentator may announce with all kinds of urgency, tune back in at 6 or 11 for the rest of the story. In other words, you're going to get punchlined in. It's going to get up here. We'll talk about some of the negative and positive things in and around us and how we might approach them in what I'm going to call look at the bright side. There's a song 
I, I, I promise I'm not singing. Keep on the sunny side. <laughs> Y'all can sing if you want to. Uh, it's written by another fellow named Carter, AP. They were from the musical part of the family, not me. And they were from here in Virginia, of course. And while the song probably wouldn't be considered a hymn or maybe even gospel music, it is inspirational. Listen, listen to the words I'm going to read them. The, there's three verses in, in, in the course. There's a dark and troubled side of life, one that's filled with care and strife. Then the side that plays the happy part, still your span of what you have done, find your place beneath the sun, and the sunshine will brighten up your heart. When life's stormy, let it faith let faith abide, and you'll always turn the tide. Lighten your hopes and you'll come smiling through. In each life there must be rain, but you'll banish every pain if you picture the rainbow in the blue. Just remember to sing out strong when you find the road is long. And your burden won't be hard to bear if you learn to wear a smile. You'll shorten every trial, for the laughter will drive away your care. Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help you every day. It will brighten every way. If you keep on the sunny side of life. It's not hard for me not to say it because you don't want to hear me say it. <clears throat> there's, there's some more scripture that you know as a child, and, and it's, it's one of those that's brought comfort to many in many situations. And from David, the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, he starts. And then he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you're with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. He concludes that by saying, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These words, a message of comfort, of promise, of security, and hope. Often we're inclined to fall into the trap of feeling sorry for ourselves, for one reason or another. We may be overwhelmed with life's challenges and struggles, whether they're health-related, financial problems, strained relationships, or some other stress-causing issue. Some folks can face these things and seem to never complain. <coughs> they seem to consider themselves blessed and fortunate that matters are not even worse. They don't dwell on what's missing or what's wrong, rather they're thankful for what they have. And go back to the glass, is, is it half full or is it half empty? Mm -hmm. How do you see it? They see the bright side. Often even non-Christians, even non-Christians in similar circumstances will say, I don't have to look far to see somebody worse off than I am. Mm -hmm. And we don't. That's right. If you look at the headlines in the paper or follow the lead stories in the newscast on your favorite station, you'd be hard pressed to find something good in the news. There's war in the Middle East and Asia, fighting over some aggressor or other <clears throat> ideological stance or dispute. There's crime of all kinds, white collar, blue collar, no collar, and probably dog collar. But somebody's <laughs> fighting somewhere all the time. With upcoming elections, the political mudslinging, and there's no, no, and that's so counterproductive and you get absolutely tired of hearing it. What used to be entertainment is now contaminated with conversation, <clears throat> vocabulary and scenes that are nothing less than a bone. A whole lot of the commercials ought to be X-rated. Mm -hmm. They really should. The incessant bombardment of this pollution has its impact. A person could begin to believe, that, and some do, that the world is depraved and evil, and there's no good anywhere. People would do well. People would do well to to uh, find a more positive source of entertainment and make better use of their time. Get involved with good people doing good things. Go, take, go help somebody do something. Amen. Just do somebody a favor. Take in the beauty of God's creation. Go and ride around town, around the country, and just look at all he's made and be grateful for it and see the beauty. Take pictures. 
<laughs> take pictures. <laughs> yeah, take pictures. Become a uh, part of a Bible study. Become a volunteer. As a result, as a result of bad bad behavior, and that's another way of saying criminal activity. The United States has one of the higher, and this is not a, anything we can brag about, but it has one of the higher incarceration rates in the world. A third distant, a third distant, distant total population behind China and India, and with a population of now about 335 and a half million people as of May of this year, there are about 531 people out of every 100,000 in the United States that are confined in prison or jail. The good side of that is that the other 99,469 are free of leading peaceful, productive lives. And before anybody says anything, yeah, I know. The cynic will say, some of them just haven't been caught yet. <laughs> but, but, what kind of attitude is that? That's, a, that's, not, that's, that's living in the negative. It's not looking at the positive side of life. Now, where did I get off track? They don't live on the bright side. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 4.8, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, <coughs> but not in despair. <coughs> he is declaring that they will not be deterred or overwhelmed by the difficulties they face. Paul didn't, Paul didn't even let jail stop him. Mm -hmm. He did not let jail stop him. Our faith should be so strong. We should let the good news of Jesus be dominant and premier in our lives. The media hypes the negative fueling the fires of fear, cynicism, and even panic. Reporting the news is no longer simply presenting facts and providing information, but has become something bordering on sensationalism and glamorization. Mm -hmm. There's more drama in a newscast or weather for report than a, a full-length movie sometimes. The publicity given to crime, war, and social decay is almost criminal in itself. It often breeds and fuels further activity, for instance, the so-called copycat crimes. Bad news sells, it draws attention. How twisted is that? Is good news people performing random acts of kindness, maybe the successful completion of a marathon by a physically challenged veteran? Is that not noteworthy? How about a teenager who initiated a campaign to help the homeless or to do things in, in their neighborhood to, to help folks who can't, who can no longer do for themselves. Most people want, need, and deserve to hear these kinds of things, but yet others seem to prefer the clouds of doom rather than live on the right side. Some people seem to thrive on living in fear and despair. It's as if they see only the dark side of everything. They want to take a road trip, but they worried that there was one chance in 788,269, they run over and they'll get a flat tire, so they screw up the trip. Well, what happened to the other 788,268 chances that it wouldn't happen? More importantly, where's their trust, their faith? Paul said in 2 Timothy 1 7, For God has not given us the spirit of fear. God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. People say, and rightly so, that God's in control, and yet they seem to only see or only focus on the negative, the bad and the ugly in the world. Do they really believe God's in control? God is good. <coughs> the world is imperfect, it's sinful and fallen, but whether one engages in sin or bad doings is optional. It's a choice that people make not something that God inflicts on us, okay? It's a choice that people make to do, do what's wrong, not something that's forced on us. As with the choice of, to sin, some people become almost obsessed with and allow themselves to be consumed, confused, and even condemned by the negative influences around them. In so doing, they forfeit the joy that could be theirs if they would instead focus on the positive, on the bright side of life. Jesus said in John 12, 46, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. That whosoever believes, believes in me should not abide in darkness. The choice is everybody's. Live in the light, the light which is Jesus, or live in darkness. 
choice is ours. Don't misunderstand, reckless living or throwing caution to the wind is not recommended. You need to keep on stopping if the traffic light is red, and mm -hmm. if you're taking medication, you need to keep on doing it unless the doctor tells you otherwise. And don't leave your purses or other valuables in the unlocked cars you run in the post office for a second. Mail a letter. It might not be there when you come back. Right. Well, Lois, in your case, the car might not be there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Lois can tell This one, this one intended to be a pick on Lois Day. <laughs> you probably ought to give a serious thought and no small amount of prayer before taking up some hobby look like skydiving or mountain climbing. That's not something to be taken lightly. But imagine for a moment a man, maybe yourself, on a, let's say a city sidewalk. He walks up and down, and up and down, and up and down. He gets almost to the corner, and he stops, he comes back. He gets almost to this corner, he stops, and goes back. He never goes all the way to the corner because he's afraid of what's lurking around the corner. He, he, he doesn't want to face the unknown. He's confined himself, he's, he's imprisoned himself in his own little world right there. He's not coming out of his shell and doing the things that he should do for others and worst of all, doing the things he should do for God. He's locked himself in his own little prison. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> Missing out on a lot of life. <clears throat> Proverbs 3.25 says, Be not afraid of sudden, sudden fear, neither the desolation of the wicked when it comes. And Proverbs 16.20 tells us, He that handles a matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Trust God. Go all the way to the corner. He'll take care of whatever's around that corner for you and lead you on to the next one if that's where he wants you to go. Now, ignoring that those ugly, evil, and troublesome things won't make them go away or make them any less real or any less of a, or any less of a potential threat. The horror, the bitterness, and the carnage notwithstanding, even these death, uh, devastations of war should not make us question our faith or question God. Here's, here's the thing. The devil scores again when people make more room for what's wrong with the world and with life than they do for what God has made good and the good that's in the world. Let me say that again. The devil scores again when people make more room for what's wrong with the world and with life than they do for what God has made good and the good in the world. Mm -hmm. We say it, we're giving the devil too much credit. Yeah. We're giving him too much opportunity. Yeah. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, But as it is written, eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. We, we, we can't comprehend, we can't imagine what heaven's going to be like. We know it's going to be good, because God said it is. But we, we just can't comprehend that at this point in our existence. Give God, give, give God in His great creation, the goodness of His people, the room that He and they deserve to flourish in your life. Look at the bright side. If you've ever had a person cheat you out of something or misrepresent something of themselves to you, you know what it's like to be burned, as, we, as you say. Yeah. That can take on any kind of context. <coughs> a reaction to this is to become cynical, skeptical, and mistrusted. But is this yet another tool, another tool that we give the devil that he uses to rob people of the joy that can be theirs through good relationships with others? We, get, we let ourselves be consumed by one bad apple. Yep. We're going to quit eating apples? That's right. No. <laughs> a grudge is like poison. Not, this is not a new, new phrase to you. A grudge is like poison. A cancer destroying its host while she or he waits for the other party to fall ill from it. That's right. Yeah. It's just better to give it to God. Give it to God, you'll feel a burden fly away from you like it's just unimaginable almost. To be learned and applied here is a lesson in forgiving and forgetting. God spoke to Joshua, telling him in chapter 1, verse 9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be you dismayed. 
For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be you dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We're never by ourselves. We're never alone. If one truly believes God's in control, then one should surely trust Him. No road is so lonely, no path so rough as those we attempt to walk alone. Let Jesus be your light, your guide, and you will always see the bright side. Be of good courage, and He shall strengthen your heart, all you that hope in the Lord. So David wrote in Psalm 31, 24. Living in fear, dismay, and skepticism is akin to not trusting God. Receiving this promise from God, one can't help but see the bright side. <clears throat> Be of good courage, and He shall strengthen your heart, all you that hope in the Lord. Maintaining a garden, I know some of you do, you have flowers and vegetables, one thing or another, requires a lot of work. Left unattended, weeds will overtake the desired plants and choke them out. Likewise, the garden of life, the garden of life, will be over, can be overrun with the weeds of sin or of challenges of one kind or another, often casting a shadow over one's emotions and, com and compromising their faith or witness. But all is not gloom and doom. All is not gloom and doom. In Psalms 34, 19, we read, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The Lord delivers him out of them all. We can trust God to help, help us over, under, or around, or through any obstacle which comes our way, delivering us, preserving us in His life. Psalm 112, 7 says, He shall not be afraid of evil things. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Faith is diminished and compromised when the devil's influences are allowed to overshadow the power, the glory, and the presence of God. The, the, devil can't, the devil can't elbow his way in if we don't let him. We make room for that tramp. He doesn't, he doesn't just force himself in. It's, it's our choices. Live on the bright side. Let your faith be unwavering. Worry, borrowing trouble, is a pit which swallows so many. Folks, <clears throat> folks worry, stress out, and many may become obsessed with what they may or may not of what, what may or may not happen to them or someone they love. They may have an illness for which a treatment or a possible remedy has been recommended, but they're afraid to move ahead with, ahead with it for whatever reason. They heard that somebody down the road had the same problem and that treatment or surgery didn't work too well for them, so they put it off and, well, I might, I might fall in that same pit. It might not work for me either. And they get, keep getting worse and wonder why. God gave the doctors and the medical community knowledge and, and experience and what have you to help those around them. We have to trust God through them to help us. Amen. <clears throat> what happened to their faith? What happened to their faith? Do they not believe that God will take care of them? Do they live in a world of darkness? Parents worry when their children have uh, will leave home for college or for work and career, or just to test their wings and live on their own. The parents have had 18 or so years to point them in the right direction, to teach them right from wrong, to guide them in decision making. There's nothing to be gained by worrying at this point. And besides, what are they really afraid of? That the kids will <laughs> fail or that they fail as parents? That's a, that's a look in the mirror. <laughs> That's so sometimes what's looking back at you is not ugly. I mean, not pretty. It is ugly. <laughs> Best to stay in touch. Let them know that they're loved and place them in God's hands. You can't see the bright side if you worry. You can't see the bright side if you worry. People get real concerned about the future, worrying over whether they'll have enough money, about their health, about their living arrangements, and any number of other things. They may just be cheating themselves out of, out of the quality of their future, the quality of their future by their worry. It's been determined that worry and stress have, a de have devastating effects on one's body and mind. Jesus said, Jesus said in Matthew 6, 27 through 29, mm -hmm. which of you 
by taking thought or worry mm -hmm. can add one cubit to his stature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Uh -huh. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory mm -hmm. was not arrayed like one of these. And Jesus was saying, don't worry, it ain't worth it. He makes it plain, mm -hmm. nothing good comes from worrying. Jesus cautioned against the cares of the world. The, the false security of wealth, greed, or position can come between us and Him. Our outlook could become dimmed and we could become as a drone in God's behalf. Mm -hmm. We could become as a drone. Mark 4, 19, Jesus said it like this, And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the Word and it becomes unfruitful. Don't take your eyes off the bright side. This is the day which the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Okay? Amen. So says the writer of Psalm, Psalm 18, 24, encouraging us to see the love and bounty of God, to see the bright side. God has made, He's provided us this day. He's given it to us. It should be embraced, enjoyed, and cherished for the gift that it is, lived in His honor, to the fullest and not in fear, and not in fear, despair, or worry. It is, is it a stretch to say that giving God His rightful place leaves no room for worry, fear, or disdain? If we give God His place, we're pushing everything else aside, all that ugliness aside. That's okay. right. Christians, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. That's right, amen. And we have unfettered access to the greatest power, mm -hmm. the greatest love, mm -hmm. the greatest wisdom, and the greatest knowledge that exists. <laughs> we have access to the one who holds tomorrow. With God's presence and all presence and all he offers us with his promises, we we have have we any need, have we any right to live in fear or, or dismay? <clears throat> in his own words, Jesus said in John, John 8, 12, I'm the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Mm -hmm. Live in and on the bright side. Live with Jesus. <coughs> His light will penetrate the deepest darkness. Paul wrote in Philippians 4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. He continued in verses 6 and 7, saying, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding mm -hmm. shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. What a promise. What a promise. If that won't keep you looking on the right side, what will? Think now. Think now as we finish. Of life as a beautiful rose bush. Your favorite color. Among the foliage and blooms, there are thorns, thorns in this bush of life, but don't avoid those roses just because the thorns are there. <laughs> don't pass up to the beauty and the smell. Experience and share the pleasure and joy they bring, even though you might get stuck by a thorn once in a while. It's how you approach the thorns and your reaction to them that will set the stage for the joy, the peace, and the play and pleasure in your life. It determines how much room you leave for the good and even for God. God wants His people to be happy. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to be content and of good cheer. To allow ourselves to live up otherwise is an affront to God. Live in the light of His love. He is the bright side. Let's pray. Yes, God, you are the bright side. And the truth is, you should be the only side. The only side which we see or want to look at. Because it's only because of you that we are. Or that we can be. So God, help us. Help us to, to walk in your light. To let your light shine through us. And not just on us. Mm -hmm. But so that others may see you that they'll want to be part of your kingdom too. Use us, God, to that end. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The angel on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Yeah, right. Deep on the sunny side of life. It will help you every day. It will brighten all your way. If you keep on the sunny side of life. That's my concert for the morning. <laughs>